Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's Q&A session with the UB Online MS and Business Analytics Faculty Director, Professor Dominic Salido. Um, just as a reminder, this session is intended, intended for students interested in the online MSBA program, and a lot of what we're covering today is related specifically to the online program. Uh, we did have some great questions submitted during the registration process, and we really appreciate you taking the time to do so. And we will definitely cover them during today's session before we open it up to any other questions that you may have. As a side note, if you are specifically interested in the residential in-person MSB program, I will add my email to the chat um, if you would like to connect after today's session to, to go into those specifics um, for the residential piece. But to get started, just with some general questions that we do get on the admission side, um, we often get the question of, is the GMAT or the GRE required for this application? No, the UB School of Management does not require a GMAT or GRE for the online program. All you're looking to do is an application, a $100 application fee, your updated resume, and your unofficial transcripts to be considered. Another question that we get is, is the application fee waived? Uh, we do not offer application fee waivers. The application fee is $100. There are a couple of categorical exceptions to this, um, specifically if you are a veteran or a spouse of a U.S. veteran, um, feel free to reach out and we can kind of walk you through what those processes look like. We're also asked, you know, how long is the program and when do classes begin? Uh, classes for online, we, uh, we admit students for both the fall semester and the spring semester. Most online uh, MSBA students will choose to take one three credit course per seven week module. Uh, of which there are two in, in the fall and in spring semesters. So the program can typically be completed in about 21 months, but there is flexibility to it. So you can speed up or slow down the process by working with the academic advisor once you start your classes. Um, another question that we get is if international students are eligible to apply, the answer is absolutely. However, we do like to just um, make the point that the online MSBA program is fully online, fully asynchronous, and we do not issue F1 student visas for this program. Um, with that being said, I have some questions for uh, Professor Salido, so um, we will switch over to him. So my first question for you, um, uh, Professor Salido, is are there course prerequisites and is work experience required for this program? Yeah, Um no, uh, there aren't prerequisites to any of the coursework that are that's happening. The way that I'll start with the prerequisites, then I'll get into work experience and kind of what that offers and what benefits that um, that that kind of provides. Just to just to kind of cover all of our bases. So, from a prerequisites perspective, no, n there aren't prerequisites. There isn't a a presupposition that you entered the program with with uh, domain specific knowledge in the topic areas and the courses do not take the assumption that you have that background. And so, you know, if you're coming from a background that isn't, you know, data oriented or management oriented, you don't need to worry too much because we do have accelerators. We do have um, sort of like a, a resources and coursework and things like that to prep you beforehand, but also your faculty in those courses kind of start off with the assumption that everybody's at the at the foundational level um, before proceeding. That doesn't mean that if you have prior experience that you're going to be bored or left in the dust. A lot of times our what our faculty will wind up doing, especially in courses like I can talk about our database course with Professor Falahati, right? Um, he will provide sort of the foundational elements and then accelerate quite quickly into um, uh, uh, advanced methods in relational database management systems and SQL and things like that. That, providing an opportunity for all people um, with all different types of experience levels to kind of uh, uh, benefit from that. Now, work experience is, is, is a second kind of very, very common question. We have people uh, in our program, students with zero years of work experience, meaning they're coming straight from their undergraduate um, uh, uh, degrees in, in kind of going through the program uh, uh, post. And we have folks with 10, 15 plus years of work experience um, and everybody in between. Now, the program is structured as a part-time asynchronous sort of workload, which means that it is designed with the idea that students could be working a full-time job and have other commitments that they're navigating and balancing alongside of that, 
that kind of academic side of things. Um, does that mean that you need to have that work experience prior to coming in? No. Um, could it be helpful? Yeah, work experience is always helpful, but you're not going to be left behind uh, if you don't have that work experience. And in fact, you know, some of the folks that you'll work with with that work experience will provide different perspectives and help you accelerate even quicker. And so, you know, I think the program is really interesting, particularly if you're, you know, uh, uh, interested in taking sort of this part time asynchronous thing. Maybe you're searching for a job or maybe you're working and you want to kind of, uh, you know, even if it's a part time role that you're working and want to kind of just build that educational background. I think it's a great opportunity, but not not necessary to have uh, 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 any measure of years of work experience. Excellent. And kind of going off, you talked a little bit about some of like the benefits of the program, but can you talk a little bit about what you think are the benefits of the online MSBA program and just kind of the curriculum a little bit? Yeah, overall with the curriculum, you know, the curriculum for the online MSBA uh, matches, you know, the core requirements and things like that from our in-residence MSBA program. And the idea behind it is really this idea that data is everything. Um, I was a cybersecurity professional in my industry days back when I was in consulting and in some leadership roles. And, uh, 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 you know, everything we were doing was data oriented and finance. Everything we do is data oriented and marketing. Everything we do is data oriented. And so the MSBA Think of it sort of as this as this uh, 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 way in which you can uh, learn more about data driven methods and data driven decision making and data driven storytelling that you can then go ahead and apply through the lens of a domain or a series of domains that you may wish to focus on or be interested in. And so that's why in our curriculum, you'll see things like our applied analytics uh, domain flux core, right? Where you get to choose something like, I don't know, marketing or finance or healthcare, right? Um, or supply chain out of that to, to really kind of get these applied methods for business. Because the whole overarching advantage of our program is teaching you, you know, a uh, 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 cutting edge data-driven methods to uh, to be a more effective leader, to be a more effective manager and to drive decision-making in, in organizations. Um, and that's really kind of the core benefit. And it's what really distinguishes this program. And this is, it's not a question I think on the list, but it is definitely a question that comes up. It's what distinguishes us really from a data science program in effect, right? Whereas the data science program is really, really diving super deep into more hardcore mathematical and statistical methods and, and the subatomic level of building, you know, uh, and coding predictive models and things like that. We're on the applied side. We're on operationalizing. We're on building things and then taking that forward and implementing them in businesses to really affect change. Um, and so, and so that's kind of where the MS business analytics program sits in, in, in some of the, some of the key benefits. I mean, when it comes to like the outcomes of the program, you know, our students are coming from all different backgrounds. I mean, we have folks that come from, you know, our, our more commonly thought of business backgrounds or computer science backgrounds, but we also have folks from psychology and from history backgrounds and from uh, mechanical engineering and, and, and more kind of biomedical backgrounds and things like that. And all of them kind of recognize this idea that data-driven decision-making, data-driven storytelling, and being able to, to have, a, have a strong command over the collection, integration, analysis, and, and use effectively of that data is of critical importance. And so I'd say the, the, the kind of the benefits of that and the, the benefits of that, of that sort of melting pot of backgrounds really plays well to the strengths of, you know, the, the benefits of the program to the students. Great. And some questions that we got um, through registration were around the MS practicum experience. So um, if you could just talk a little bit about, you know, what that process looks like. Um, some specific questions that we received were, you know, are there specific criteria for project proposals for it? Um, is there any tips for, for learning about potential faculty to work with for the practicum? And if companies reach out to UB or if UB reaches out to companies to provide data or if students need to reach out. So you guys talk a little bit about the practicum experience, that'd be wonderful. Yeah, practicum is practicum is a funny thing, right? Because it always kind of drums up questions, as as Rebecca, you and I were talking about just a little <laughs> bit ago. Um, every graduate program that you that you take, every master's program has some sort of capstone, a culminating experience. Some or uh, some degree programs have it as a graduate thesis. Some degree programs have it as more of an internship requirement. Some of them have it as this sort of project driven capstone which is really what our practicum is is this pro project driven capstone 
part of the reason why uh, a, a lot of folks kind of have questions about it is 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 because it's it's such a it's such a behemoth to define. You know, when we sit down and we think about class and database management systems, it's pretty clear what the course in database management systems is going to teach and what the learning outcomes are going to be for you, right? It's going to be database management systems. You're going to learn about SQL. You're going to be learning about relational databases. You're going to be the expert in, um, in cardinality and, and things like that. But when I say practicum and I say, well, it's, it's, it's kind of this, this project driven requirement, people go, well, what's the project? And then I kick the question right back to them and I say, yeah, you're right. What is the project? <laughs> And and the reason for that is because what we've crafted within the business analytics program is is something that's uh, that's in my opinion in in kind of in in working with some some other programs that are our peers in the in the in the uh, you know across the United States is that it, it is unique right what we want what my goal is for you is to have agency in your own educational process yes you have agency in choosing electives but that's kind of agency on rails. Right. You have the ability to choose a pathway, but that pathway is already kind of predefined. And so but with so many different individuals from so many different backgrounds and so many different uh, 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 kind of goals and, and, and dreams for where they want to take this degree and things like that, it necessitates sort of a, 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 a more wild card driven approach, which is what the practicum really has become. Um, and, and the practicum is really project driven, right? Um, oftentimes in residence, I'll talk about in residence first and then we'll get to online, right? Um, just because I want you guys to understand how this works um, and how this has worked for years in residence and why that kind of, how that maps with online. Because a lot of folks I find in the online program will talk to our in residence cohorts because, well, it's the same degree, right? And so you are peers, you are classmates, even though you're not taking classes together. Um, the 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 way that I structured it initially for our in residence program is around students picking their own projects and then having a list of prefab projects that are provided with real data that they can also choose from. And so students kind of have this decision point right at the beginning, which is, do I want to come up with my own project that I drive forward, that I do, that's meaningful to me, that's personal, that's whatever it is that I can use to demonstrate my skills and knowledge that I've learned throughout the program because it is a capstone, right? Then go ahead, set off on it pitch a project proposal during the time span of the class, work with the faculty who's leading the class to run through that, uh, to run through that practicum, um, uh, use them as a resource, help gather data, run your methods against them and, and produce some sort of output, right? And we've had students do things that were personally meaningful to them that tied back to their, um, their, their, their uh, 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 kind of cultural uh, significance, right? And things like that. That's one thing. I had one student that really, really, really just wanted to collect a whole bunch of data about UFOs and do some sort of really interesting analysis of UFO sightings over the years. And, and, and he's like, does that sound cool? I'm like, hey, look it, here's the deal. You are using the tools. You are using the methods. You are using what you've learned to demonstrate that through the lens of something that you're passionate about. And that's what's really important is that passion and using that to unify everything you've learned. Now, on the flip side, there's also kind of prefab projects that are going to be, um, you know, sometimes an organization will have a problem statement and they'll provide data and then students will work on that data driven problem that is, you know, real data from that organization to kind of help uh, achieve some 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 outcome, um, some presentation, some insights, some conclusions. We've had that happen in healthcare. We had some students working for a local TV broadcasting station. We had students working for um, local non for profits. We had students working with just uh, uh, a local consumer insights firm. Like we've got a lot of these kind of kind of going on, and the reason why we're so obtuse is because it's so open ended. It it changes every year. We have different projects. Every year we have different companies with different data driven problems. Every year there might be a different faculty. So in online, there's a different faculty member that's kind of running the course, and they have different things that they're able to bring to the table. And so the one thing I would say to students after talking about it for four minutes, the one thing I would, I would leave you with is one, it is the end of your degree, right? It is the, it's like, if you, if folks are out there stressed out about the practicum, it's kind of, it's kind of equivalent to sort of like 
uh, 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 you know, uh, meeting somebody for the first time and stressing out about your inevitable wedding, right? It's 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 premature, right, to stress out about it. But I also respect the fact that you're already thinking about it. And so there's no sense in not putting that thought into it right now and coming prepared into the program and, 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 and knowing what you want to get out of it at first and then crafting your elective experiences through that lens and then reaching the practicum. And once you get there, having a solid idea of what you want to get out of it, that you can communicate to that faculty member so they can help you find the best project, craft the best project or place you with an existing project that, that works the best. And so it's not bad to think about it right now, but if you're, if you're in the camp and I would have been in this camp too, if I was a, back when I was a student, if you're in the camp where you're like, that stresses me out because it's open-ended, it is super premature. And we've never had a student that that that's faltered on their on their practicum. Um, we have de it's designed to be in, in more of an individual one on one kind of exercise uh, uh, where we kind of work with you through that process. So there's nothing to be concerned about, but it does rely on you having that agency and taking control of your own educational narrative uh, 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 to really get the best uh, uh, outcome out of it. Great. That was a great um, kind of overview of the project of experience and, and all those really great details in between there. So at this point in time, we can open up if there's any additional questions um, that you have. You can either type them into the chat box. You can take yourself off of mute. Now is just a good time if you've got any questions, whether it's admissions based, whether it's program based. Uh, Professor Salido and I would be more than happy to address any additional questions that you may have. And just kind of why you may be thinking about that, I will address this one more question that I do get asked quite frequently, which is about really the tuition and fees and funding opportunities. Um, tuition and fees can all be found right on our website. Um, when it comes to funding your degree, I would just like to mention that we actually don't offer any scholarships for online programming, uh, but you can review loan information and other funding information opportunities on our Funding Your Degree webpage, which um, when I send out this recording, I'll be sure to include those in the email as well. Uh, and for those of you who could be working full time, we do encourage you to uh, check with your employer to see if they offer any possible tuition reimbursement opportunities for you as well. Um, but those are really the, the the main questions that we get and the, the, the submitted questions that we received. So we will be offering more of these throughout the, the year. So we do encourage you, you know, if you have more questions for Professor Salito or myself, you know, you can schedule a one on one appointment with myself or you can wait for another Q&A. Um, to be happening um, in, in the coming months. So, uh, but that being said, we thank you so, so much for taking some time out to hear a little bit and ask your questions uh, to, our, uh, to our faculty director. And uh, we look forward to having more conversations with you and, and thank you very much for attending.